The Music is Life podcast has our own merch now over on tpublic.com. Click the link below in the video description. Looking for some new threads? We got t-shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, crew neck sweatshirts, tank tops, baseball tees, and also clothes for kids and onesies for your little infant metalheads. Don't want clothes but love the Java? We got you covered with coffee mugs and travel mugs. Need protection for your electronics? We've also got phone and laptop cases. We've got everything you're looking for at the tpublic.com Music is Life podcast store. Use my link below for fast service. Thanks for your support. TerraNut is proud to offer you a natural nut bar chock full of healthy fats, minerals, and protein that meet your demands. Go to their website, www.terranut.com. You can order from them directly and they will ship it to you. Use my coupon code LUMAVS and you will get a 25% discount on your first order. TerraNut Superfood Snacks, www.terranut.com. Don't forget to use coupon code LUMAVS at checkout. Fuel your life. Ladies and gentlemen, how do? We are ready and waiting for you now. If it's a fight that you dare see, we've acquired our strength through pain. No more are we pathetic and we You are the reason why we claim that we've all become this way. And our regret is prison back. My name is Peter Steele. I am a kind, wonderful human being, sees the value in all life, lover of all living things, typical Christian, hypocristian. I am very happy. One of the things that I ask all of my guests is the recent advent of cancel culture in art. If we go back in time, we see that the music of Carnivore and Typo Negative was one of the first hits of cancel culture from people who had no concept of dry wit and sarcasm, which is something people from New York just have. Yeah. You know, there's no harm meant behind it. The thing about art is that one person said a long time ago that they'll know something is obscene if they see it, proving that whatever is deemed offensive is subjective and not objective. Yes, yeah, science, bitch! What is your opinion on cancel culture? And has there been any backlash from pushers of cancel culture for the music of Carnivore as performed by Carnivore AD? Actually, there was. I think the, the cancel culture thing in, in the arts and the music has been around for a while. You know, it, they, they have a new name for it now and it's packaged differently. I guess Anything you could call it the satanic panic of the 80s, possibly. Yeah, or even going further back before that, John Lennon and his comment that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus Christ, right? Um, Elvis in the 50s. Again, completely taken out of context. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So this is really nothing new. Again, it's called something different now and it's packaged differently or, you know, put out there differently. Elvis in the 50s with the... Uh, you know, the religious groups in, in the more... Uh, oh, and the hip swinging on Ed Sullivan, right? Yeah, yeah. And also they burned his records. He had bonfires out in the street burning Elvis records um, in, in some of the rural communities in the 50s. Uh, or even going further back, you know, in, in the classical music, Stravinsky, when he composed all his, his dissonant compositions, allegedly there were riots in the street, you know, in, dis, in, in disapproval of it. Was he the one that incorporated the devil's tritone in music? Um, well, actually, that goes back even further. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, he did a lot of that. Absolutely. It was very experimental. So yeah, there's a lot of the flat five, the flat fifth, the devil's tritone. Yeah, sure. So it's nothing new. I studied art, art history in college. Uh, in the Middle Ages, if you composed any music that had that tritone, you'd be subject to uh, being accused of witchcraft and be burned at the stake. That was kind of a form of cancel culture in a way as well, wasn't it? Yeah, this so, is true. Uh...
love that chord. That's like my favorite, uh, <laughs> my favorite interval. Actually, getting back love to the too. comic, um, my character actually composes music with the tritone in it, and that's why I'm blasphemed by the church. Make a long story short. Yeah. So this cancel culture thing is goes back to the Middle Ages, right? With the tritone and being burnt at the stake. At least, no, at least nobody's burning anybody at the stake right now, right? Or at least not yet. <laughs> well, you know what I say: a hot steak is better than a cold chop. Boo! Ah. Yeah, no, that is true. <laughs> so, um, oh, but, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's it's in league with my kind of humor, so I could appreciate. Thank you. It. So, no, you're very welcome. But getting back to the second part of the question, if we've enc encountered any of that, um, we have. You know, the main controversy with with uh, with, with the original band was the, you know, the uh, scenario, accusation. You know, songs like Jesus, Hitler, and Race War, right? And the symbol that looks like work itself, whatever, but it has uh, three ends of it instead of four. Uh, it, um, they called it a, a try something. I forgot what it was, but I know what you're yeah. referring to. So yeah, that you know, we, we encountered some of, of of that controversy actually. As a matter of fact, Germany didn't even want to touch the band for the first couple of years of its existence. You know, then finally um, in 2019, the Rock Art Festival, you know, took a chance and were like, all right, and booked us. Luckily, but uh, yeah, the content they thought it was just uh, this is unacceptable. You know, I mean, you know, the, Ger the German people are very sensitive about their past history, so I. I I can almost kind of, kind of understand where they're coming from, but a song like Jesus said, there was never, you know, a we it's an anthem at all. It wasn't in context. When you listen to it, it proves of anything that Peter was a wordsmith who very much were so able yeah. to kind of like twist two complete polar opposite dichotomies and somehow twist it into one evil character, not promoting it. And again, it's like context and intent is everything. In my yeah, opinion, no so, question about it. Yeah, you yeah, know, he absolutely. wasn't pushing. Yeah, the, I, I don't want to say the word, so I'm going to say he wasn't pushing Yahtzeeism. Yeah, no, no, definitely not. Definitely not. You know, it was just like a crazy science fiction tale that Pete came up with, you know, about a, a nun that's raped by East Han in World War II and then gives birth to a child who's part Christ and part Hitler, but doesn't know if he should be bad or evil. You know, so the character isn't even fully evil. He's just torn, you know, similar to, the, to my predicament in the comic book. So maybe again, then maybe that's another allegory about the the inherent struggle between good and evil and man, you know, and that's all it was. That's all it ever was, you know, but uh, I guess anything where the word Hitler is going to be used is going to definitely make everybody, you know, put everybody back. And I guess I can understand that as well. Right. Yeah. But I look at it this way. If if Mel Brooks can get away with making fun of Hitler on ice. Know. He had uh, in the one film right? <laughs> oh, Hitler on ice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, if typo negative who, as people should know, Josh Silver, although an atheist, he was raised Jewish. From a so Jewish background. Why, yeah, of course. So why would he want to be associated with a group that was promoting Yahtzeeism? Of course. Again, yeah, I have to course. say Yahtzee instead of the other word for fear of getting taken down. Yeah, no, I understand. Of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, nobody really reads the lyrics or knows about that, you know? Also, I think the delivery too, you know, Hitler, if you hear it like that, <laughs> you know, but meanwhile, if Hitler's ice skating on the Mel Brooks movie, I think, it, you know, it's, it's all about the delivery as well. Exactly. So, like I said, context and intent is everything. Back in 1991, Typo Negative did their first ever tour in Europe. Left-wing activist groups protested the ban and branded them as fascists and sexist. For those listening to the show, this activist from the Netherlands named Rob was interviewed along with Peter and the club promoter that booked Typo's gig and was forced to cancel it. The promoter stated that one person's opinion on music shouldn't dictate whether an artist gets to perform or not, regardless if they're not fans of the music or subject matter. The activist repeatedly refers to song titles as opposed to the context of the lyrics. When questioned about the subject matter in Peter's lyrics, rather than address the context, the activist once again glosses over the context and intent of the songs and instead retorts with whataboutisms, proving that whoever is looking for trouble, where there is no trouble to be found, will more than likely find it because they deem it that way, not because it is that way. Projecting viewpoints that Peter was a misogynist, meanwhile, it's a known fact that songs from Slow, Deep, and Hard were about one person and not all. The activist Rob once again clearly shows his stupidity and lack of critical thinking, similar to activists today. That's right, I didn't stutter. By taking one song title out of context without addressing the subject matter within the song. He even addresses his own misconceptions of the song Zero Tolerance with the statement, at least that's what I thought it meant. 
proving that his viewpoint bears no value or meaning because of what he deems a song to be about and not what it's actually about with any objectivity. He can't just say, I don't like it, but I'm not going to stop others from listening to it. No. Instead, he's saying, I don't like it anyway, and I'm going to choose for you what is permissible in society because I said so. When Peter addressed the fact that he was not a fascist or misogynist, the activist Rob was then asked if, by his admission, that he wasn't any of those things. Is his viewpoint enough to still cancel Typo's concert? He then answered, for him it is. Rob is the perfect example of cancel culture from the 1990s that has manifested into the toxicity we have today with Twitterati. As long as art is consensual and doesn't depict the violation of defenseless humans or animals in real life, people should be able to enjoy whatever they want with their money, either in a performance setting or within the privacy of their own home. Congrats, Rob. You've officially earned a spot in the cancel culture douchebag hall of shame. Yeah! Emotional damage! So we definitely caught some of that crap. Um, and again, Germany didn't even want to touch us, and eventually they did. I've had people in Germany tell me, uh, I can't believe you're actually up on stage here in Germany singing this song. I'm like, I can't believe it either. You know, but uh, I'll always take the time to make these points and present it like this. I'm not apologizing for it. I'm just trying to give you a background of what this is about. You know, so we, we experienced that. And, and the song Race War, too. That's another controversial one. I uh, don't think there's any reason why you should have to apologize for it. I mean, you yeah, know, and I wouldn't. And right, because honestly, it's like art is meant to make you think it's meant to be enjoyed. It's meant to entertain, but it's also there to provide a different perspective that deviates from one's narrative and if you start censoring what people write about then you're not allowing them to maximize on their artistry i don't like censorship of any kind i'm not saying that i'm promoting anything that would hurt anyone but i will say once you start forcing standards on people then you're gonna have nothing but automatons in this world and that's not what life is about that's not the yeah. kind of life that i would want to live absolutely absolutely and also in this case i mean that's not what this art was about though it's a misunderstanding right you know it's like you're not no it's not this you're wrong you know same thing with race war you know but everyone fails to realize the end line of it says no one wins we all lose you know even though the rest of the lyrics are really strong and horrific you know but listen to read it listen this is where it ends off that's that's the that's the punchline at the end Mm -hmm. That's really what it means. If you could take news footage from today and make a video out of it with that song, you would see that people's treatment towards each other, Pete's lyrics were prophetic. You yeah, know? they certainly were. He was ahead of his time with that, no question about it. It's just mm -hmm. as relevant now as it was in 1986 when he wrote it or, or whenever he, he finalized it. Yeah, but again, it's not, you know, Shine Nut, the old anthem. No, or it's anything not. like that. And, and, you know, and, and if it was, I would have a problem singing it, you know, so I'm not a shine. Yeah, well, I'm not a shine, I'm not a far from it. You know what I mean? So absolutely. Yeah, and I have to give I have to give credit to Paul, Paul Bearer, because I know there was a point a couple of years ago where sheer terror were oh, being, the Proud Boys thing, right? Yeah. yeah and yeah, I'm really yeah. glad that he spoke out against that because I, I Paul said, and I remember exactly what he said. It was at the uh, concert at Tompkins Square Park. He said, Listen, I'm not going to sit here and condemn anyone for their political beliefs, but I don't want to associate them because of their political beliefs, you know, meaning that Sheer Terror was never a band who were chauvinists of any kind. They were just Absolutely. regular guys playing music that they loved, not trying to force any kind of agenda down people's throat, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I respect that about them. Seems the end. That Gavin McGinnis jerk off from the Proud Boys had mentioned us on his podcast in favorable light. Now, for a lot of bands and a lot of people, that might be a good thing, thinking, well, hey, we got some free publicity out of this guy, and thank him. Ah, uh -uh, fuck that. So I posted on the Facebook thing that Proud Boys are not welcome anywhere we are or at any of our shows. To which they replied that they were gonna their revenge, mind you. This is them now. This is this. They were gonna buy our shirts 
and wear them to marches and and sing our songs. That was their revenge plan. So they were gonna put money in my pocket and walk around singing songs about manic depression, cocaine, and snooping. I guess I won. And a lot of people, and some other people are like, oh, why, why would you want to alienate, you know, a potential audience? Would you shut up for a second? Why would you want to alienate a, per, you know, a certain audience or, or certain people that might come to see you play, no matter what their political beliefs are? Because of what their political beliefs are. Everybody complains about political fucking correctness. Political correctness is not the problem. Political ambivalence is. Just because the bathroom is closer than the kitchen doesn't mean you gotta eat shit. Right? Remember that. I'm a proud boy. I eat all my vegetables. I think that was a heroic move on his part, actually. Definitely. To stand uh, up, you know, to that organization and uh, and do what he did. No yeah, question about that. And to give you context as to why I feel the way I do is because my dad was an auto mechanic on Astoria Boulevard in East Elmhurst. He owned his own business. Mm -hmm. That was a poor area of Long Island City, Astoria, Queens. Everyone who lived around there who didn't look like us were his customers. He, he They went to him because he treated them with respect and right. with love. Absolutely. And, you know, I asked my, I asked my dad, I said, you know, dad, you, this is when he was still alive, obviously. I asked him, you know, you came here in 1968, you know, you were at the, the height of the civil rights movement yeah, and you've never professed hatred for anyone of any kind who, who was of a different persuasion than you. He's like, why is that? He said, because at the end of the day, we all want to do well for ourselves and take care of our families. Yeah, no one's better than anybody. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And, and that's totally where I'm at, you know, and that's why it could be disheartening, you know, for me when I have to confront some of this stuff here, you know, within the context of the carnivore music, you know. And well, the fact that you just said it yourself right now on this podcast, that if you thought that the context of the lyrics were anything but what they were about, you wouldn't sing them. No, definitely so I think not. Right there yeah. is. You absolutely. Know, absolutely. I even make a statement. Enough. Yeah. I even make a statement before we do race war. I say, and now on the subject of xenophobia, ethnocentricity and racism, and these are all parts of the song. No one wins. We all lose. You got it. <laughs> like, I want to make sure everybody understands that. Everybody got that? Not that I'm trying to be politically correct or be preachy or anything. That's not being I'm just trying to set correct. the record straight here. Yeah. And this isn't like my, you know, a liberal view trying to change something. I'm, I'm taking the, the actual phrases in the song and reciting them before the song. So it's not like I'm putting my own spin on it, you know? So I want to make that perfectly clear. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah. if anyone has a problem with what he's saying, fuck you, Malaka! Really? Some people have had a problem that I said that. Well. And I've been called, oh, this is the politically correct version of it. No, it's not. No. It's, these are the lyrics in the song. You know what I mean? So, uh, whatever, you know. It can't be politically correct if what he was singing about then is what's going on now between these morons. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. I mean, nobody told me th that to my face, but I'll see, you know, once in a while I'll see a comment online or whatever. You know, so it's like, all right, I mean, if you have a problem with me reciting those lyrics that are talking about that this isn't a racist song, then you got a bigger problem, you know what I mean, than I do. It's just... <laughs> I look at it this way. So People whatever. who judge it for being a racist song they're looking for trouble where it doesn't exist. And if anything, for the finger they're pointing at you, there's three pointing right back at them. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, they, they have a bigger problem. So exactly. But whatever. So I, I have had to confront that, you know, um, those are some examples. And again, the symbol, you know, the tri, uh, the tri symbol or whatever. I was about to call it the tri Reich, but that's a Queens Reich symbol. <laughs> you know, that's something. Yeah, I don't think they that's get something different. Yeah, they have no troubles with that. I hope not. Even in New York, actually, we had uh, we had those on a flyer and the product was like, get that off the flyer. And we did. It's like, OK, you know, I know it looks I know it, it looks similar. I, you know, I, I understand everybody's everybody's uh, viewpoint here. Right. I mean, the, the story about what that symbol was, from what I understand, is it's derived from a hour symbol, but it's inverted. It's reversed. So that changes the the meaning, right? If you have a cross and you turn it upside down, it means right. the opposite. It's similar to the Yahtzee symbol, where if it's reversed, is actually a Buddhist symbol. Right, that's right. It goes back to the most one of the most peaceful cultures you could think of, you know? Mm -hmm. And also on another note, I was watching an episode of Star Trek not that long ago, and on one of the planets, they had a symbol that looked kind of like that on, on one of the structures in one of the planets that they had visited. The Tri-One? 
Yeah, absolutely. Oh. I forget which episode that is, uh, but I'm watching that. And I'm like, wait a minute. Did Pete actually get that from Star Trek? <laughs> I want to be surprised if he did. Yeah, because I know he was a big fan. So I don't know. But that, that's caused problems. And uh, we've had to like take that off. And, and you know what? Fuck it. Fine. I, I don't, we don't need this controversy. Simple. Not that yeah, you, you just want to play the music and just yeah. make yourselves happy and make the fans happy. And I think yeah, in absolutely. the end, that's what absolutely. matters. Yeah. You no know? question about that. We, we actually had a shirt that had the symbol on it for one, one point. And then I'm like, forget it. Just replace it with the fallout symbol. And then we changed the print. Right. You know, I remember Phil Anselmo when he was still in Pantera, this is around the time that Far Beyond Driven came out. Him and Vinnie Paul were interviewed by MTV News and he had a carnivore shirt yeah, that had that right. symbol on it. And they never heard the end of it, yeah. Yeah, and that asshole Kurt Loder referred to it as a, uh, you know, he referred to it as what he referred to it. Ever since the thrash rant band Pantera topped the charts with its new album Far Beyond Driven, there's been media mumbling about the alleged racism of the group's lyrics. A quick check of the lyric sheet reveals nothing beyond the usual apocalyptic hardcore spew, although such phrases as building a blood and kill them all may strike some non-fans as vaguely unsettling. We spoke to Pantera about all this recently, and in our interview with frontman Phil Anselmo, you'll notice he's wearing a t-shirt bearing the Triscallion, a circle of three interlocked sevens that's well known as a white supremacist symbol in South Africa. So she knew the meaning of that t-shirt symbol on someone who was wearing a Pantera publicist said clothes are not the issue. And this is why Kurt Loder worked at MTV for as long as he did, because yeah. no one else could take him seriously as a journalist. <laughs> but yeah, I digress. Right. Good point. Good point. I mean, granted, I mean, Pete definitely was definitely pushing the envelope a little bit, right? Because I mean, it does resemble it, you know, how people are. But I think he didn't give a shit. He's like, well, if you're going to be offended, then be offended. Fuck it. You know, I think he was coming from that, that perspective as well. Well, he, he didn't sit here and, and try to explain it like I am. He didn't have to. I appreciate the fact that you're explaining it and telling, you know, the listeners and showing the viewers that Carnivore AD is not coming from a place of, you know, hatred, yeah. which I never thought that was ever the case for a second. And, you know, again, offensiveness is subjective, not objective. You know, if you're offended by something, you need to question why and then ask yourself, really, are you that offended by it? Yeah. And if you're not, just walk away. Yeah. So. Go listen to another record or something. You know, there are plenty of other things in the world to be offended by other than this. What well, one quick quote about, about being about things that are offensive and something that Pete said, actually, Pete always maybe you've, you've heard him say this before. He always felt that uh, that music, rock music especially, isn't any good unless it offends a lot of people, unless it offends the right wing, the left wing your parents, the school system, uh, the media, et cetera, et cetera. The church. He, the church, yeah, the church. And he listens to some other things as well. If it doesn't upset people, it's yeah. not rock music. If it doesn't upset your parents, it's not rock music. We were labeled both fascists and communists. We were just capitalists. Ha ha. You know, world domination. One, two, three. Four. Communist Nazi. This way you can, from left, right, Right wing, left wing, chicken wing. Communism, fascism, botulism, number one. Everybody gets free salmonella. You're a true character. You're a I've been told. Rock is, is, is taking those primal feelings and amplifying them to 150 fucking decibels and saying fuck you to the world. So I agree with him. coming from. Yeah, yeah, I agree too. And but he see, did. He offended that, everybody. <laughs> but but that's the thing, though. Like we're, you know, I'm a parent, and we're the age where we're older than kids that would listen to rock music. Although you know, they'd rather listen to EDM or whatever's popular right now. So I'm wondering if Pete, who I think I was naive, no, he was 50, I think, when he passed, right? I believe so. Yeah. So or 49 I, might not even been 50. Something. Either yes. Or, yeah. E either or, but you know, he was at that age where technically he'd be considered a parent. So I wondered if he still felt the same way about it. Yeah, yeah. Eventually the, the tables turn. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know. And all I have to say is no. And I, I, I do love his one political statement. He said, "We're not left wing. We're not right wing. We're chicken wing." Chicken wing. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's. And I'm like, you know what? I'm chicken wing. Yeah. All right. I'm bat wing. I have my own play on it. Bat wing. Like yeah, that. yeah. So um, you know, I'm, I want to keep with the whole shtick here. You know. So. <laughs> but uh yeah i mean crazy world crazy people right love it so long suckers 
Hey, you, you, yeah, you, turn the fucking lights on so so everybody can see this guy. Your middle finger is the exact same length as your mother's uterus. Hi, mom.